Greetings radio people, it's the 1st of April 2020, welcome back to the shack. Coronavirus hasn't got me yet, so I'm still kind of home brewing at home. The um, recent projects that we did, the recent videos uh, involved RF measurements, they involved uh, forward and reflected power measurements, directional couplers, lots of those kind of topics. We also did something with DDS, frequency generation in the bit X. Um, and we've done a few things like that in the past. It seemed a fairly natural progression to put all these bits together to try and make an antenna analyzer. So, so by that, I mean a standalone device that will allow you to check the SWR of your antenna systems. Now, having a look on the internet for an Arduino-based antenna analyzer, K6BEZ's call sign comes up here, there, and everywhere. He's clearly done a lot of great work in this area in the past. And this piece of electronics that you can see on the screen, the schematic you can see on the screen, is pretty much from his original design. I've made one of these, and I'll show you what mine looks like in a minute. The only thing that I've done here is because my, um, my software is running on this blue pill on the STM32, that means my VCC values are 3.3 volts. So I've made a few changes to the op-amp resistor so that the gain uh, fits better on that kind of power supply and that kind of output volume. But... When we're measuring forward and reflected power and SWR, in this particular instance, we don't really care about power accuracy or um, amplitude accuracy. What we're interested in here is only the difference between the forward and the reflected so that we can calculate the SWR. How much the forward actually is and how much the reflected actually is doesn't really matter. And it's because of that that this circuit is so simple. There's basically four ports with 50 ohms on them, three of which are on the circuit, one of which is the antenna. The DDS module, the AD9850 that we're going to use here, feeds its RF into here as controlled by the microcontroller. And then the reflected voltage appears here and the forward voltage appears here. That voltage is then amplified by these op-amp circuits and fed to A to D converters within the microcontroller. So I've docked this thing together using the STM32 and uh, let me show you what mine looks like. So this is what mine looks like on the bench. This is the electronics that I've just shown you the schematic of. I'll show you a close up of that in a minute. This is the DDS board that we've used in previous projects. This is actually a USB serial converter that I've used to program the bootloader onto this board so it's not actually part of the solution. This is the STM32. There's a rotary encoder, and then this is a one and a half inch OLED display. So here's the close up of the electronics. The uh, 50 ohm resistors shown in the schematic I've made using 200 ohm resistors in parallel. So there's two there, two there, and two there. Don't worry about this. I did when I was testing it, I had this soldered onto the BNC socket to make a perfect 50 ohm antenna. Uh, these are two germanium diodes. I don't know what they are. I just found them kicking around in my junk box. Anything like an OA90 or uh, anything equivalent to that would do nicely, I would have thought. And then here is the MCP6002. This is a um, uh, an operational amplifier of two, uh, two op amps in one package. And you can see the resistors and the bits and bobs around there. So the reflected and forward power come in from the diodes here and here. And then the orange and the yellow eye that you can see are feeding off to the analog inputs of the STM32 microcontroller. This piece of coax you can see here is the RF feed from the DDS. It's really simple display. Now, I've got a commercial... Um, antenna analyzer it's by rig expert this goes up to 170 megahertz so this is something that this hobby one certainly won't do this will only cover hf with this particular dds but let's see how they compare so i connected my 40 meter dipole to my commercial antenna analyzer and this is the results that i get so i don't know why it's chosen to put the scale up to 10 but you can see that the swr starts right at the bottom in the CW section of the band right down at roughly one point something to one and climbs to over two, so nearly 2.2 or thereabouts. That's what my commercial unit has done. And then the homebrew one that we've just knocked together gives me this result here. So it's pretty spot on compared to the commercial one. I've tried it on a few antennas and the results seem really, really good. Now, I've put together a fritzing diagram as I normally do, which I'll link in down below. This is the wiring. The STM32 we've used in lots and lots of projects. This is the forward voltage and reflected voltage coming from the schematic that I just showed you. We've got a one and a half inch OLED display, which I'll, again, I'll put a link in down below if you want to get one of those from Amazon, or I'm sure you can find them at other auction sites. 
we've got a very standard rotary encoder and this is the AD9850 module. Now as far as the software is concerned I started uh, with an Arduino sketch by somebody called Dr. Phil. Well done Dr. Phil, whoever you may be. His has been modified from the original K6BZ code. I've made a few changes to run on the STM32 processor board with the, the appropriate core. I've changed the display library to be the latest version of the display library. I've used a larger display, it's actually 128 by 128 pixels. Um, I've moved the displays around so that the graphs appear in the right places and done all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've modified the interrupt routines a bit to uh, work better with the STM32. But there aren't a huge number of changes. All of the comments that were in the header of the file that I started with are now down the bottom. And there's a couple of lines of comments at the top. I'll link the software in. You're very welcome to download it and have a play with the beginning. But this project's really, really simple. It costs about three bob and a conker and it gives you a really good hobby antenna analyzer. Let me know what you think.